everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to my channel. Today we are building a dollhouse and not just any dollhouse, this is actually a Bratz dollhouse. And you guys know that I have done my fair share of dollhouse style builds on my channel, uh, probably more than most people if you count all of my Polly Pocket builds as dollhouses, which in my head I kind of do. This is more traditionally a dollhouse, I would say. It looks more like what you would think of if you think of a dollhouse. So uh, not only is this not Polly Pockets, this is Bratz. And Bratz is something that, like I said in my previous video, and if you didn't check that out already and you like Bratz, I highly suggest it. There has been this challenge going around called the Bratz Challenge. And basically it's kind of typically for uh, makeup artists to recreate their makeup and their fashion or style to try to look like a particular brat style photo, whether that be something that was from way back in the day or uh, people have been doing all these amazing redesigns of brat dolls. And I've just kind of recently fallen into the doll repainting and redesigning community and it's basically like real life sims so i have quickly become obsessed with these style videos uh basically if you've never seen one done before and i literally have never seen one done before up until like a couple days ago which is crazy because this is an entire side of youtube that i guess i just didn't really know existed they take old dolls, and it doesn't have to be Bratz dolls. I've seen Barbie dolls done, uh, Mycene dolls. There's a lot more modern dolls that I'm not really familiar with too much. And they will go through the process of getting rid of their makeup and drawing on or painting on new makeup, making them custom wigs or changing their hair, dyeing their hair, custom uh, doll clothes. And a lot of times they're trying to change them to look like a familiar character, maybe a celebrity, a YouTuber, a cartoon character, or something that is like more commonly known. And I am obsessed with these videos. I have been on a binging spree watching and trying to consume as much of this content as possible because it is literally like Sims in real life with so much more hard work and dedication uh, going into it. And I cannot even imagine how much skill that kind of stuff takes. Low-key, I really want to try doing one. But um, for one, I can just tell that it's very expensive. And I do think it's probably one of those skills that you can't just jump into. You have to learn the basics and learn all of the materials and, um, you know, trial and error very much try and do one and then do another one and keep kind of building your skills up and practicing. Uh, so maybe somewhere down the line. But yeah, I'm obsessed with these videos and it's kind of all come to me after this Bratz challenge came out. I did a video on my channel where I recreated some Bratz dolls in The Sims based off of some photos I found on Instagram. You guys really loved the video. So I figured I would do a Bratz dollhouse that I had as a child. Uh, this is one that was not actually for Bratz. It was for Little Bratz or Lil, L-I-L, Bratz. Um, and they were basically just supposed to be more travel size, compact, smaller Bratz dolls. They still had the same body shape, the same like gigantic heads, but they were just a little smaller and I think more appropriate for dollhouses. Because uh, I, I will say like the one thing that's not great about Barbies and Bratz dolls is that they are so big <laughs> that if you wanted a dollhouse for them where they could actually like literally go in and walk around the rooms, these dollhouses had to be massive. And because of that, they were so expensive. And I never actually had like a real one for a real Bratz doll or a real um, Barbie doll. But I did have these dollhouses for little Bratz. Uh, cause they were so much cheaper. And this one in particular, I am going to put photos of it up here and there. I'm kind of hoping that some of you who were into Bratz dolls had this dollhouse and you're going to recognize it instantly. This was such a staple of my childhood. I cannot even tell you, um, how much I played with this dollhouse. So basically how it worked is there was this house and it was 100% made out of cardboard, like laminated cardboard, uh, very low budget, but so cool in retrospect, like so cool that they thought to do it like this. So anyway, whatever. Uh, so it's like a traditional house and it kind of just opened up and that circular piece in the middle was an elevator. So it had two levels to it and there was actually a string in the middle that you could pull to make your uh, little Bratz dolls go up to the next level. And yeah, it was just the coolest thing. All of the furniture was made out of bendable plastic. Like it would come in these plastic sheets 
literally tell you how to fold it and button everything in into like couches and uh, beds and stuff. And then the beds were cardboard, I think. And then it just came with like a bunch of rugs and pillows made out of obviously felt and various uh, materials. And it was just so cool. It was everything. And I had, I guess, a lot of doll houses growing up when it came to Polly Pockets, but not really Bratz dolls. And this is the one that I remembered. Uh, so I wanted to make it a reality in The Sims. And you guys always seem to really love like dollhouse style builds. So this ties in really well with the whole Bratz challenge and everything going on right now. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, the piece in the center is actually a foundation piece. And what's really cool about the newer update in The Sims is that we have gotten the ability to change and manipulate the height of foundations separately from one another. So I actually placed down a circular uh, foundation piece, which I downloaded off the gallery because to be completely honest, I'm not sure how to do it. I know it's something that is possible, but I like have tried to figure out how to do it and I can't get it to look anything except for like hexagonal and octagonal. So I downloaded the circular foundation off the gallery and then just raised it up to be kind of that center piece uh, where the elevator should have been. And obviously you can't go inside of it. It is a solid piece, but it was really important to me that it was round in shape. And then I was trying to figure out how I was going to get all of the sides of the dollhouse to actually connect to the center because of the different heights to the foundation. It doesn't let you connect walls uh, of different like foundation heights, if that makes sense. So we're actually going to go into debug in a little while here, and I'm going to make a fake wall using um, canvases, like blank canvases that you would paint on before you start a painting. Uh, and it's going to be, it, it looks a little strange because it's white and there was no way for me to obviously change the color of the canvases to match what it should have been, but at least it closes off the dollhouse and gives it more of a cohesive feel instead of three separate pieces that, uh, clearly wouldn't make any sense. And I am going off of the visual reference of the home itself. I did change a lot of the colors on the outside, not the green roof. The green roof is what uh, was shown in the images and the purple door, but it showed kind of this wood color paneling on the outside and I really wasn't feeling it. It didn't feel like cartoony enough or Bratz doll enough. So uh, I changed it to purple instead, which is like a very common color with Bratz dolls and all of their furniture and just Bratz in general, uh, I think of purple. So I did go ahead and change that. And then there was this skylight on the side of one of the bedrooms that you could see on the sticker decals. So how this worked is obviously there wasn't actually a ton of furniture in these rooms. A lot of the furniture was just stickers on the wall. And then you got like uh, one or two pieces of furniture, like chairs and beds and things like that. So I could see from the stickers of the photo that the one bedroom had some kind of a skylight inside of it. So I did add that on the roof on the outside. I actually think it makes it look very like architecturally different and kind of pleasing. So I liked that, but I kept the other side plain because that is how it was shown in the photo. And then we at one point do go in and add, oh, I've already done it, <laughs> go in and add uh, some different windows to bring in the skylight a little bit better to the bedroom so that you can see it. And yeah, then I'm just going to match all of the colors to the various floors. And like I said, uh, for colors, and I would say for generally like which room is which, I tried to stay pretty much exactly with what it was showing me. So if the walls were yellow, I went with a yellow. If the floor was blue, I went with a blue. I would say when it comes to furniture, that's when I obviously strayed a little bit farther away from what it was showing because unfortunately, I think with one of the bad things about trying to do builds of things that are a little bit older or just I guess like dollhouse or toy style builds like this, it's very hard to find stock images of the original toy and things that it like came with because what I was finding is that I was finding a lot of photos of the house, but it was maybe somebody had taken it and they redesigned it for a new toy or they put their own furniture inside of it or they changed the wall uh, stickers and decals and stuff. So I couldn't really remember what came with it. It's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been a while. So I just decided I was going to go and do kind of whatever I wanted to do with the furniture. Stick with some bright colors. Uh, I think that's a good theme for all dollhouses. They usually come with very bright furniture, pinks and purples and kind of crazy colors uh, to, you know, make them bright and kind of colorful and pretty. So that's what we're going to do. But yeah, I'm just trying to get these canvases to work as a wall placement. It was difficult to get them to actually place where I wanted. 
Uh, they were kind of trying to glitch to the roof and stick to the top of the foundation. That's just kind of one of the game mechanics that I knew I was going to have to uh, very carefully navigate. And then they do have this wooden frame on the other side of the canvas that I did not want to be visible. So I had to place four canvases uh, back to back from each other so that you only saw white. It does not line up exactly, but it gives a good illusion that I am happy with. And I was actually watching or trying to watch and listening to Max's Monthly while I was doing this build. So I was uh, kind of pausing here and there just to like look at the screen and check out what was actually going on. And I'm so excited because we just got a whole bunch of stuff for, well, some new items and some new creative, some items and furniture items for uh, the Lunar New Year. And by the time this video is out, the update should already be available. So you guys probably already have downloaded it. And I'm really excited because on my list of things that I wanted to see for The Sims 4 before the end of its lifetime, I put that video out a couple of, uh, probably about a week ago now. I talked about how one of the most important things for me to see more of before the end of The Sims 4 is just more cultural references and more cultural um, things in The Sims 4 so that people can feel more included. And, you know, like, it's really important to remember that uh, this game tends to cater towards American and European audiences exclusively. And there are so many other cultures in the world that deserve to be able to feel like they can actually live their actual lives in a life simulation game. So I'm very excited to see that we got some new stuff. Let me know if you'd like to see a build centered around the Lunar New Year items, because uh, it is, they're very cool. I'm not going to pretend f that I know a ton about the uh, the Lunar New Year, so I don't really know too many of the items, but that's what's also kind of cool about getting something like this is it's also like an educational thing. You get to teach people about cultures and things that they're not totally familiar with. The only thing I know is that it is 2019 and it is the year of the pig. Uh, and your your zodiac, your Chinese zodiac, goes after your birth year. So in I was born in 1995 which makes me a pig. And every 12 years, it cycles back around. Uh, so it is the year of the pig, which means that for me, this is a year of prosperity and um, good financial standing and good health and uh, romance and all of the good stuff that you want. But I guess uh, the pig of the Chinese Zodiac is also, and I was reading about this this morning, so if I'm incorrect, I'm sorry, but this is what I was reading, is kind of a an all-inclusive because uh, it's at the end. So it's a good year for everybody. This should be a good year all the way around is what I was reading basically. And um, good in like all aspects of life as well. Uh, financially, um, romantically, school-wise, work-wise, things like that. So it's going to be a good year, you guys. And I already knew that from the beginning. So I'm very excited. It was just a little reminder from the universe, as I like to say, that this is going to be a good year for me. And I'm very, very excited for everything it has to offer. So uh, yeah. I'm excited. I, lo I loved the entire thing. And if we get more stuff like that, like if the monthly updates, not monthly updates, but that's kind of what it's uh, come down to most recently. If the free patches to the game could include like something like that, a little bit more cultural um, and inclusive, that would be awesome. I think that they should do a ton more of that forever and ever until they're all done updating the game and... Um, yeah, I just, I really liked the whole thing. So what did you guys think of it? Did you watch? It is at like a weird time of the day where I feel like a lot of people are not around to be able to actually uh, sit down and watch something like that. Like they usually do it on a Tuesday at like 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or something like that. And they did it on Monday this time around because it was the Sims uh, 19th birthday. So I, I feel like that's a very strange time of day to do it because so many people are at work and just not available to watch a live stream. But um, it makes sense, obviously, because they are also at work. So they're trying to fit it into their schedule. Uh, but what did you think of the whole thing? And were you excited? Were you kind of not really? Were you hoping for something else or a bigger announcement? I would be lying if I said at this point, I am not kind of like very desperately waiting to hear some kind of news for something, something new coming to the game. It's getting a little bit dry. Uh, and I just really would like some hype and some new just information about anything that we're getting at all. Just a one like little teaser would make me so happy. But I, a lot of people are predicting we are not going to get any kind of pack 
in the month of February. I so hope that they are wrong, but I don't know. Uh, I just, I can only hope. But yeah, to kind of get back to the build, I decided that since this was a brat's home, one of the things that I never really did in a Polly Pocket house is size up the furniture. And it would make sense for a dollhouse to have a little bit larger furniture than what is actually like in the game. Um, I never did it for Polly Pocket because Polly Pockets are so little. The furniture was never really large, but something about Bratz that is obviously uh, kind of opposite of that, the furniture pieces, even for the little Bratz, was very big, even for baby Bratz, because there were Bratz babies and they are themselves were kind of large. So the furniture was always a decent size and it felt weird building a house like this and then furnishing the rooms with standard size furniture. So wherever I could, I did go ahead and size up the furniture one or two. Originally, I was not going to do it with the beds, but it, I was putting all this oversized furniture in the rooms and then the beds weren't oversized and it was looking so strange to me. So I switched from from a double bed to a single bed and then that kind of gave me enough room to size up the furniture. So I imagine if you even though like looking at it on screen right now you probably can't see too much of a difference or maybe it doesn't look that strange to you. If you actually put a sim in game and tried to move around this uh, house or like stand a sim for example next to that refrigerator it is a lot bigger than it looks <laughs> let me tell you because uh, even just the one up bracket in size for most of these items is absolutely enormous so yeah it's just it, they're very big items um but I feel like it fits and it works really well and one thing that wouldn't size up because of course there are items in this game that don't size up uh mirrors do not size up and I just found out that counters don't size up which is kind of strange but now that I think of it makes a lot of sense there's a lot of uh things that get done on counters that would probably glitch out if you moved the counters around. So I actually took cabinets, sized them up, and then put them all the way down on the floor to give the illusion of a countertop. And I think it actually works really well. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put some more cabinets on the top to kind of fill in the wall space in the bathroom. And if you didn't notice, there was a door to obviously enter the dollhouse that was visible on the outside of the home. But on the inside, according to like the stickers that were placed in that room, there was no door there. So I just put a little bit of a wall in between, closed that room off, and then restarted the room. And uh, we're going to do that on the other side of the home as well in the living room because the outside showed windows, but the inside did not show windows. It actually showed more like stairs. So yeah, that was a, I was happy that I had enough room to do that and kind of close the room off and give the illusion uh, of the entrance on the outside and still a allow enough room to create a full uh, kitchen. I would be really curious to see what Sims would do in an oversized home like this, like if they would try to actually cook and what the animations would look like uh, for even just like washing your hands and trying to look in the mirror, like it would be kind of crazy, but interesting to me at the very least. Um, yeah, so one thing that is kind of like what always bothers me and this is a game mechanic of the sims 4 so it's not anything that like can there's nothing that can be done about it but when you do create these houses that don't close the rooms off where we're kind of like looking into the dollhouse uh, and I don't want to close the room because that's not what it looks like in real life. We end up with the outdoor lighting inside the room. So nothing really shows up as bright and vibrantly as it would if I was to close the room off. Uh, and lights don't really show up. And they just get this like casted overall shadow of darkness that is not great um, and doesn't make my job as a YouTuber very easy when it comes to thumbnails and trying to show everything off to you guys and make you want to click the video when the rooms look so dark. So that's something that I always kind of struggle with. And I think that's why I do like to bring really bright colors into the rooms to try to balance the fact that they are so dark to begin with. Um, but yeah, it's something that I always think about and kind of struggle with whenever I do these types of builds, but nothing you can really do. So we're just decorating the living room, making it a little bit boho, uh, using some stuff from Movie Hangout and those brand new posters that I just personally got from uh, Cool Kitchen Stuff that I'm so happy I got and I highly recommend. Um, so far, it seems to be like the pack that I'm going towards the most out of all of the packs that I've recently purchased. And I'm very surprised because I didn't think I would feel that way at all. At some point, I'm going to complete my collection. It's coming around the corner where I'm going to have like all of the games. I'm like buying them very slowly. And uh, at that point, 
I think I'd like to do a video where I rank them. And I know people have obviously done those videos before, but just for you guys and personally who like to hear my opinions on stuff, let me know if that's something that you would like to see from me. Um, because I do feel like I tend to be viciously honest. So if I don't like a pack, I'm definitely going to let you know. And there are packs that I've gotten that I don't really use. And I'm kind of, you know, low-key a little bit upset that I even bought them. Versus other ones that I think I would have used more. But yeah. So let me know if that's something you'd like to see. And then finally, we kind of have this area that in the photos, it was showing me a pool on the floor. So I put a fountain there. The pool itself wasn't really working. Ponds were too big for the area. And then we put some like little uh, mats down where you would lay by the pool. And I used those pile of pillows from movie hangout stuff again. I think maybe toddlers. I'm totally wrong. I'm bad about packs. Don't ever take what I say literally <laughs> for which pack things come from because I'm just bad about it. Uh, sorry. But yeah, we're pretty much at the end here. So let me know what you guys thought of this build. Would you like to see more Bratz dollhouses or dollhouses in general? Polly Pockets, anything like that. Leave your comments and suggestions down in my description box below. Did you have this house? Please tell me somebody had this house also uh, and you're reliving your childhood watching this video. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that little bell icon below to turn on post notifications so you can get updated every single time I post. And I will talk to you all in the next one.